Hello, everyone. Welcome to the IEIE the Distinguished Lecturers Webinar. I'm Yoichi Sato from the University of Tokyo. I will be a moderator of this seminar today. First, let me introduce the speaker, Professor Hiroshi Fujita from Gifu University. Uh, Professor Fujita received his PhD degree from Nagoya University in 1983. He was a visiting researcher at the K. Rossmann Radiologic Image Laboratory of the University of Chicago in 1983 to 1986. He became an associate professor in 1991 and a professor in 1995 at the Faculty of Engineering of Gifu University. He has been a professor and a chair of intelligent image information since 2002 at the Graduate School of Medicine and he's now a research professor. Also, he's a fellow of IEIC, a member and an honorary president of the Society of Medical Image Information, and an honorary member of the Japan Society for Medical Imaging Technology. His research interests, his research interests include computer-aided diagnosis systems and image analysis, processing, and evaluation in medicine. He received numerous awards, such as the Medical Imaging Information Society Award in 2018. And also he has co-published over 1,000 papers in journals, conference proceedings, book chapters, and scientific magazines. After Professor Fujita's talk, we will have time for Q&A. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box of this Zoom. They will be answered later. So without further ado, let's welcome Professor Hiroshi Fujita. Uh, yes. Okay, uh, let me start. <clears throat> Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to IEICE webinar. Um, my name is uh, Hiroshi Fujita from Gifts University, Japan. Uh, thank you very much for your kind intro introduction, uh, Professor Sato. I'm very honored to have this opportunity. <clears throat> my talk will be uh, more the general topic of medical AI for diagnostic uh, imaging support rather than technical details. My voice is not good condition today, so please forgive me for any inconvenience. Okay, let me let me start uh, with this slide. <clears throat> Our laboratory at Gifu University has been involved for many years in the development of computer aided diagnosis system that support uh, doctors. Uh, interpretation of images. <clears throat> Look at the images on the slide. Do you know what uh, these images are? Uh, yes, as you may have guessed, these images are chest radiographs. Then is there any abnormal shadow um, in somewhere? It appears to have a large uh, circular shadow as indicated by the red arrow. This is maybe easy for you to find it. The problem is that even with such a large shadow, there is still the possibility of oversight in a case like mass screening. According to the research shown at the bottom uh, paper, um, rate of over looking lung cancer with a diameter of three centimeter or less was 28 percent which is large number i've shown there are three reasons for oversight um it's written here firstly the doctor did not see the shadow properly or secondly uh the doctor overlooks the shadow or maybe the shadow was found but didn't think it was uh, malignant so maybe these three reasons uh, over, uh, oversight was happened, <clears throat> unfortunately. To prevent such unfortunate oversight, 
physicians have long called for the development of computer-aided diagnostic system. <clears throat> There is a long history in the development of uh, systems that supports a doctor's diagnosis with computers, which is usually called CAD or CAD. Uh, CAD stands for Computer Aided Detection or Diagnosis. Now, let me give you a brief overview of the history of CAD. This slide shows the relationship between the expected level of AI on the vertical axis and age on the horizontal axis. And also the progress of CAD is indicated directly below the horizontal axis. There have been two AI booms in the past, and we are currently in the era of the third AI boom, which having a major impact on the CAD. As you can see on the slide, this is a 1960 article in radiology uh, written by Dr. Professor Lasted, who demonstrated the need for computerized image analysis and proposed automatic classification of normal and abnormal chest X-ray images. The study on chest radiography of the late Professor Toriwaki of Nagoya University in Japan is also one of them. This slide shows the first paper on breast cancer analysis in mammography, published in 1967, the Journal of Radiology. It should be noted that many of these early studies were aimed at automated diagnosis. Professor Kunio Doi of the University of Chicago changed their research strategy from automated diagnosis to assisted diagnosis, that is CAD. The photo on the right shows the first CAD system to detect breast cancers on the mammograms developed at the University of Chicago in 1994. This was about 10 years after the CAD development began at the University of Chicago. This mammography CAD, which was developed in this way at the University of Chicago, was successfully commercialized for the first time in the world in 1998 by a venture company called R2 Technology, which obtained regulatory approval from the U United States FDA. Following this CAD for mammography, uh, CAD systems for other diagnostic uh, fields have been commercialized with success as shown in this slide. Uh, this is for the chestography CAD for the lung cancer detection. And this is for chest CT CAD for uh, lung, uh, lung cancer detection. And this is for uh, chronoscopy, CT chronoscopy. This is uh, for the detection of polyps, uh, colon polyps. Although many mammography care for breast cancer screening has become widely used in the United States, it has become clear that there is still many problems with this traditional CAD, which unfortunately gradually uh, began to stagnate. Some uh, problems of CAD is written here. For example, um, uh, it, uh, it is required high development cost or performance is too inadequate so that uh, it's increased recall rate. That is too bad. And clinical papers that prove to be useful uh, useless. So this is a uh, no, good problem, big problem, such as like a phantom paper. And the support that system supports only specific regions. It is troublesome to use because of the bad workflow. At the time, when CAD was in such a slump, 
Professor Jeffrey Hinton, who developed deep learning and is called the Godfather, made the following speech at the 2016 International Conference, which is held in Toronto. Let's uh, listen for a moment what he said in his speech. Points. What he said was that needed to be specifically mentioned are indicated by red underlines in this slide. What he said, for example, people should stop training radiologists now. And also he said, it is just completely obvious that within five years, deep learning is going to do better than radiologists because it is going to be able to obtain a lot of more experience. It might be 10 years, something, something. So, <clears throat> thus uh, he predicted that there would soon be no need for radiologists, no any more radiologists. The same year in November 2016, uh, AI was the main topic of discussion at the RSNA conference, which is a gathering of radiologists, the biggest concern, conference, conference in the world. Uh, the conclusion of the opening session of, of this conference um, discussed for the subject was the radiologists should use AI collectively to provide uh, better care to the patient. Let's take a look how deep learning has changed the development of uh, development strategy strategy of CED. The figure on this slide shows the relationship between AI, machine learning, uh, neural networks, and deep learning. AI is the research field that may computers have human-like intelligence, as you know. And machine learning, it learned from experience and become wider, wiser. And neural networks is a method of machine learning that mimics the neural network of human brain. And finally, deep learning learns and improves itself. Traditional or conventional CAD requires handmade feature extraction and classification by human. Such uh, approach based on rule-based method was time consuming and required creation of computer algorithms for each region in the application. On the other hand, the deep learning based CAD called, sometimes called AI CAD, uh, these steps, feature extraction and classification, are uh, replaced by deep learning. AI extracts features from training data, and therefore it is easy to handle now. By incorporating deep learning technology into traditional CAD, we have been able to shorten the CAD development process from 10 years to one year or even less. This is the most famous basic structure of deep learning, which consists of convolutional layers and the pooling layers and is called CNN. In this example, chest X-ray images are inputted to the CNN and classification result of the nodule are outputted. I would like to emphasize that the idea of the CNN comes from uh, Professor Fukushima's first proposal to develop the first model in 1979 in Japan that mimics the visual cortex called neocognitron. 
There are many open source software easily available to apply deep learning to various medical images. Additionally, since no special computer is required, even medical doctors themselves can now easily develop systems that apply deep learning, which is very nice. But instead, image data with labels or annotations have become the most important, but this is not an easy task for medical doctors, physicians who are very busy with their daily work. Let me give you an example of how great the application of deep learning to medical imaging is. In our laboratory, we have been working for many years on automatic extraction of human organs from images, uh, such as shown in this slide. The traditional method to do this requires the creation of a dedicated model for each organ. Its development was insufficient, the process was complex and not always accurate. Therefore, there were high expectations for deep learning application. We apply the deep learning method to segment a large number of organs simultaneously. We have applied the deep learning to a data set of 240 uh, total CT scans labeled with 17 organ lesions. The slide shows 3D view of uh, grand truths by medical doctors. It took a uh, no, long time to make it, but something like one year, you know, many medical doctors uh, uh, collaborated with to do this. The 17 organs were segmented successfully as shown in the, uh, in the light, such as grand tooth on the left. You know, it looks very similar, it looks very nice. Simultaneously can do it now. Now, let me show you some examples of deep learning applications in the field of medical image diagnosis. Um, this slide shows the spread of deep learning applications in the medical imaging field, such as um, classification, um, detection, segmentation, prediction, and image uh, generation. <clears throat> now, uh, <clears throat> so now I will show you some excellent examples from from scientific papers. 2018 paper on the annals of oncology demonstrated that AI can differentiate skin cancer more accurately than dermatologists are shown in this slide. Dermatologist uh, uh, accuracy was 87% versus AI was 95%. So it's completely AI war in this case. And they uh, used uh, 100,000 uh, images to train the AI model. But what about chest laser labs with more complex anatomical structures? The ROC curve on the left show deep learning outperforming all types of physicians in classifying chest laser labs as normal or abnormal, demonstrating AI's superior ability. More, uh, you know, deep learning is the best, you know, but the other medical doctor, non-radiology physicians, both satisfied radiologists, classic radiologists, they are, uh, you know, not superior than uh, deep learning. A paper published in Nature Medicine in 2019 showed that AI models can access, uh, assess cancer risk as well as, or even better than experienced radiologists in low-dose CD lung cancer. This was uh, done by uh, Google. One fundus uh, eye photographs are uh, used not only in daily practice, but also in screening 
and are useful for diagnosing systemic, you know, systemic diseases, not only for the eye diseases. So the Google conducted an interesting study on the prediction of cardiovascular risk factors. In this slide, the actual age is plotted on the horizontal axis, and the predicted age is plotted on the vertical, vertical axis. Even an eye doctor, medical doctor, has never been able to do this. Not only age, but also gender, and uh, this is for the age case, this is for the gender, and the dia uh, diabetes, and the smoking uh, potential, and uh, uh, BMI, and blood pressure uh, with uh, considerable accuracy. This is amazing result. Nobody cannot do that so far. So, <clears throat> if that is the case, what are the challenges that must be solved for medical AI to be truly successful? Data issue is one of them. The graph shows the performance of AI CAD versus amount of data used for the model training, deep learning training. Since deep learning is data driven and data hungry, the number of data for the training is very important, as shown by the lead curve. Moreover, it is uh, as it is called garbage in and garbage out, not only the quantity of data, but also the quality of the data is very important. Difficulties in, me in medical data collection include specificity in medical data, including regulatory issues, scarcity of data, dependence of data uh, on imaging equipment and race and uh, variability among physicians when creating annotation data. So it is not easy task in the medical imaging field. There is a research that uses deep learning to classify chest radiographs as abnormal or normal. normal. The result of this study were promising, and the conclusion of the paper was that it would be useful for automatic prioritization. This research also conducted an ROC analysis on your right, and it shows how much data is needed. This is quite interesting, and there are significant difference between 20,000 and 2,000, but not between 20,000 and 200,000. Therefore, the number of data needed for this purpose is 20,000 uh, 20, data. Anyway, it shows that the training of deep learning requires a lot of data. The AI CAD system shown on the slide is being developed by an Australian startup company called Analyze.ai. They collected uh, uh, more than 780,000 cases with over 280 million labels from 148 radiologists. Wow, this is you know, incredible. And uh, this is an amazing example of successful detection of two 124 different chest regions just from the images. A similar excellent system has also been developed for the brain CT uh, images, which is shown here. Collecting uh, medical image data is generally not easy due to the personal information protection law and so on. Therefore, public uh, databases are often very important. NIH in the United States has released data on 30,000 chest radiographs in 2017, September. Also, the uh, NIH has also released the data on 10,000 chest CT cases in 2018, 
which is called deep region. Recently, uh, many papers have been published showing that generative adversarial networks technology, so-called GAM, is also effective. Conceptual diagram of image generation by GAM is shown in this slide. In GAM, deep learning to create fakes in generated Z and deep learning to detect fakes uh, in uh, discriminated D fight to finally build up a sophisticated composite image. The GAM can be used in the training process of deep learning model to increase the accuracy. I just shown here, a fake dog became distinguishable from real dogs even by the developer. Can you tell which image is a fake dog? Maybe just one, maybe some. Can you guess? Can you recognize? You can tell the difference, right? The top left is a fake dog. The only the uh, even the background is created you know, looks like very well. Therefore, it is expected to be used in the medical imaging. This technique. As an example of GAN application, researchers developed an AI system for COVID-19 detection on chest radiographs. As a result of enhancing the number of data with GAN technology, the classification performance was improved from 85% to 95% in this study. Oh, this is very nice. With an another recent technology called federated learning, it is not necessary to collect the data of each hospital in one place, but each hospital trains individually only with its own private data, then collects only the local model, just the local model in one place, and creates a global model on the federated server. In the, uh, in the study presented here, just as one example, the federate learning was used for the automatic detection of abnormalities in COVID-19 patient chest CT images, for which there was a little data when COVID-19 was first started. The study presented in, the, in this slide was conducted jointly by hospitals in Hong Kong mainland China and Germany, and showed the effectiveness of CNN-based AI models trained using a uh, federated learning approach. So this uh, approach was very successful for this purpose. There is a, pr a problem of black box nature and medical AI requires explainable AI. Since a major part of the structure in deep learning is black box, it is impossible to know how and why it's decided on the task. One way to solve this problem is to use a technique called heat map colored representation. Heat map indicate which part of the image has a problem. Uh, that's just this shown here uh, in the case of memogram or breast cancer. However, this is still not enough because it does not provide any evidence as to why deep learning detects the location. Therefore, the development of new technologies is desirable in medical imaging field. The development of AI in the field of medical imaging is fraught with difficulties because companies can only commercialize their product after receiving the approval from governmental agencies, but they can be used in medical facilities. The figure on this slide shows three steps to adopting AI medical software devices in the AI-powered medical imaging market. Currently, the United States is at the uh, horizon two, and uh, but now 
gradually moving to、uh, horizon three. I can show you some example. Anyway, FDA has uh, up, uh, approved approximately seven、uh, hundred healthcare AI algorithm to date. Its characteristics are the vast majority of these are related to medical imaging. Eighty-seven percent of devices on、uh, on this list are in red origin. No device has been authorized that uses generative AI or artificial general intelligence (AGI) or powered by、uh, large language models. Let me show you some examples of commercially available product. This slide shows an example of a 3D mammography AI care system. We scanned for breast cancer detection and cancer classification capabilities as well, which was commercially available in the United States since 2018. A number of products recently approved by the United States FDA include triage CAD. The slide shows such a system that would immediately send an image to a stroke specialist smartphone. If a stroke is sus suspected after a CT scan, so 52% reduction on average increase in cases ex、uh, exceeding 95%. In addition, this stroke triage CAD was the first AI medical device to be approved for insurance reimbursement in the United States. Such insurance reimbursement is extremely important for the product to be used、uh, more in clinical practice. At present, the only case、uh, of automated diagnosis that has been successfully commercialized in the diagnosis of diabetic retinopathy in fundus images. Uh, from the eye image, this AI system was also approved for the insurance reimbursement in the United States. Now, continuous learning is also an important technology for future AI CAD. After a company sells a, its medical AI CAD software. The parameters of AI or deep learning software remains、uh, essentially fixed, making it、uh, making it impossible for the company to change them. The algorithm calls locked algorithm. However, continuous learning in the medical field is desirable, but there are still many challenges, and it has not yet reached commercialization. So,、uh, adaptive algorithm is required. There are great expectations for generative AI in the new AI CAD era. It is said that generative AI will bring about a new industrial revolution. Generative AI is sometimes said to be causing the fourth AI. Uh, boom, which is you know, showing here. We are currently、uh, undergoing a major shift from discriminative AI to generative AI. Discriminative AI makes inferences about input information, such as images.、Uh, on the other hand, generative AI create content such as text, like ChatGPT. And also images, music, and so on, in response in this response to instructions. An important model in the era of generative AI is the、uh, foundation models, the、uh, which is designed to produce a wide and、uh, general variety of outputs. 
new deep learning model called Transformer for natural language processing was announced by Google in 2017 in a paper titled, Attention is All You Need. Transformer is about to replace CNN in image processing and RNN in language processing. Uh, both have been the le uh, leading model of deep learning. Transformer was also extended to images and is now called uh, Vision Transformer. Transformers, <clears throat> so the Vision Transformer is said to be a great uh, revolution in image uh, recognition. Chat GPT is a hot topic right now, uh, as you know, and uh, so let's uh, ask Chat GPT, what is Chat GPT? Um, so I input uh, this, uh, you know, uh, what is chat GPT? So chat, chat GPT is responded in this way. <clears throat> chat GPT is a variant of the GPT generated pre-trained transformer series of the models developed by OpenAI. It's specifically designed and uh, fine-tuned for conversational interactions. But built, uh, but, uh, built upon the transformer architecture, GPT models are trained on vast amount of text to understand and generate human-like textual co content. Also, it shows key points about ChatGPT, pre-trained and fine-tuning, uh, generative capability, not perfect, doesn't retain information, ethical consideration. So the answer was, you know, perfect. So in this way, anyway, transformer model is used in ChatGPT. For the principle of ChatGPT, please refer to a professional textbook, and ChatGPT has become a representative generative AI now. This article describes that um, the rise of ChatGPT shows it may be time to reassess how we teach and uh, test uh, radiology resident. Le there are already many news stories and the uh, chat GPT passing the medical professional exams. Chat GPT can improve interpretability of CAD systems as shown in the slide. For an example of mammography diagnosis, such AI based uh, interactive CAD system explains its reasoning to clinician regarding the interpretation of a screening mammograms. Recently, chat GPT has become able to handle audio and images as well. So I inputted a chest X-ray image into chat GPT quite recently. As you can see in the right half of the slide, the response was shown um, shown here. Sorry, I can't help with that. Unfortunately, as of now, uh, CAD-like capabilities doesn't exist yet in the chat GPT. On the other hand, Google has developed its own platform model called MedPalm which is specialized in medical care. It seems that we can expect to realize interactive AI care, just like the one shown in the slide. If we ask uh, this system, and uh, can you write me a report analyzing this chest X-ray? It responds with the following. Next slide. As shown in the area circled in the red line uh, uh, here, the system outputs several findings and finally gives the uh, impression uh, here and that no active dis uh, disease seen in chest. This is demonstration, uh, no, this demonstration is very promising for us. Foundation model. Foundation model 
like GPT is a machine learning model that goes through a two-step training process, pre-training and fine-tuning. A major feature is that one basic model can be adapted to various tasks, so multitasking. ChatGPT is one of the good examples. By simply inputting image data and clinical data into such a foundation model, it is likely that an AI medical doctor model that is more interactive and more interpretable, similar to human doctor, will soon be realized near future. The problem with the large-scale language models such as ChatGPT is that they often don't give the correct answer. The findings are published in JAMA Oncology paper have shown that the AI chatbot often provides recommendations that do not align with established guidelines. Hallucinations, not part of any recommended treatment, raising concerns about the reliability of its other advice for not only cancer treatment, but potentially other medical questions as well. Therefore, it is necessary to create a medical AI system that does not cause such hallucinations. Large language models, LLMs, such as ChatGPT, are not suitable for use with radiology report as well due to a patient privacy uh, constraint. Recently, NRH in the United States researchers have demonstrated the feasibility of using locally ex executable alternative uh, LLM, large language models, for labeling radiology, uh, radio radiography reports. This study indicates the feasibility of implementing privacy present prevent preserving LLM through local development clinical settings, which may effectively address concerns about patient privacy and data security in clinical tasks, which are very, very important in medical field. As shown in this example, chat GPT's problems will gradually be solved. Closing remarks uh, for my talk now. As I mentioned, uh, there are many research reports showing that the level of medical imaging AI has already reached a level equal to or higher than that of human medical doctors, although there are still some issues to be addressed. Just now, seven years after the Hinton speech, are radiologists no longer needed? It seems that the Professor Hinton predicted it has not happened yet. Fortunate, I think. The uh, Langroth, Langroth, a professor of radiology at Stanford University in the United States, said AI is here to stay in radiology, and so are the radiologists. But radiologists who use AI will replace radiologists who don't. This is the current state of medical imaging AI diagnosis, but that may change in the near future. Now, how should we make practical use of medical image AI in clinical practice? This is because we must remember that AI does not always give the right answer, but often gives the wrong answer sometimes, as mentioned before. Most of the cases, collaboration of human doctors and the AI is promising. This is very important. The study on the slide, for example, in the case of skin cancer diagnosis, shows that physician diagnosis of skin cancer using AI was superior to AI alone and physicians alone. And in experience, physicians get the most benefit from algorithmic assistance. Similar result in indicated for the study in breast cancer screening. Therefore, the combination of both collaborations has been shown to be important. 
This slide gives some of the selected challenges for the advancement of AI CAD. We need the creation of large scale databases and we need to develop a learning model trained with small amount of data and we need explainable AI and uh, uh, continuous learning, we need it, and incorporating into generative AI is promising, I think, and we need validation of effective effectiveness AI care in the real-world clinical trial. This is most important. Finally, I hope that many young researchers will enter the field of medical image AI and they play an uh, active role. Two Stanford experts say that AI won't transform healthcare until the 2030s. Professors uh, Fei-Fei Li and Andrew Ng are skept skeptical that uh, we will see breakthrough in AI healthcare in the next few years. Therefore, it will take some more time to solve the issues in the field of medical imaging AI card. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your attention. That's all my talk. Uh, Professor Fujita, thank you very much. Uh, I'm really impressed uh, with the rapid development of this field uh, in the last, I think, five years, even, even in the last five years. Mm -hmm. Even though if this field has a, such a long history, starting from as early as 1960s, I think that's right after the birth of AI. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, like to, uh, I'd like to take questions from the audience. If if you have any questions, please um, uh, put your question in the chat channel. And yeah, right now we are still not uh, seeing any uh, questions yet. Um, so as uh, if, okay. Uh, while we're waiting for the uh, the questions from the audience, uh, let me let me ask a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got, yeah. So I got. I was wondering what is the the basic training. Uh, if suppose if we want to be a AI expert, medical AI expert, uh, as a student. Mm -hmm. uh, so what what kind of basic training is needed? So like what what department they should first of all they should, uh, you know study uh, in the undergraduate course, for instance. Um, the, the, uh, you mean how train the deep learning in yes. medical imaging? Uh, no, uh, no, if you want to be an expert or researcher or um, the practitioner of medical AI, uh -huh. what kind of training uh, uh, is, are needed? For instance, if you study the computer science and AI, you don't know anything about medical field. Mm -hmm. But if you study in the medical field, maybe they are not so uh, familiar with the AI techniques. Mm -hmm. So is it, is, let's say you're, if, uh, suppose if you are a high school student uh, who are dreaming to be a medical AI expert in the future, mm -hmm. how do they study? How should they study in university? Um, if you come to the laboratory, who is, uh, no, which is working for the medical <laughs> AI, that's the best way uh, to do. And uh, the important thing sometimes happened is uh, engineering people like, uh, you know, the who belong to faculty of engineering who doesn't know the detail of the medical images. So the collaboration is very important with medical doctor. And uh, sometimes language is different, which is called a language different. Mm -hmm. you no, know, what we speak using uh, terminology of engineering, what they speak uh, as a medical doctor, uh, they use uh, uh, same Japanese or same English, but looks like a different language. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> communication is very mm -hmm. important. What they need and uh, what is important. So the this collaboration discussion was anyway very important. Mm, I see. Um, and also, I got uh, uh, if we if I can, uh, 
I'd like to ask one more question. So uh, since the AI or deep learning techniques are making a huge impact in this medical uh, image diagnosis, so are we uh, so are we starting the seeing the reduction of uh, mor uh, mortality rate or the like, reduction of medical expenses the whole like uh, so are we studying the effect uh, pos like a positive effect of medical AI you mean uh, the medical AI can can decrease the uh, mortality rate, for example? Yeah, yeah. So are we, have we already started started seeing the evidence of uh, uh, yes, yes. Action? Especially for the screening purpose, uh, we need a lot of lot of uh, experiment uh, in the field in the actual medical field because in the laboratory uh, study shows a good uh, performance like uh, using ROC or other yeah. other values looks very good. But if uh, we start to use at the actual hospital, actual clinical site, sometimes it doesn't work. So mm -hmm. uh, to do such a thing is, uh, as I mentioned uh, at the uh, last uh, uh, Slide. Uh, real world uh, clinical trial is very important. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. traditional CAD uh, first it looks uh, okay, but uh, starting mm -hmm. many people uh, use the uh, uh, CAD mammography system in the hospital. Then they know it doesn't work in the actual mm -hmm. world because mm -hmm. of the workflow problem and a lot mm -hmm. of things. But now. Uh, because of the uh, recent AI technology, mm -hmm. the sensitivity specificity, you know, these uh, barriers are uh, increased and uh, uh, we know a lot of uh, tech, uh, uh, knowledge how we should do that. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's okay. I see. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, okay. So if there is no other questions for the audience, I'd like to conclude uh, Professor yes. uh, uh webinar. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Suita, again, yes. Thank you very much. So uh, before closing this Zoom session, I'd like to spend a few minutes to introduce uh, this, introduce IEIC, if I may. Uh, let me share the screen. Okay, uh, so uh, IEICE is the largest international academic society in Japan in the field of electronics, information, and communication engineering. The IEICE English webinar is organized by the IEICE International Committee. These webinars are presented by the IEICE distinguished lecturers. We have delivered English webinars every, uh, every month since uh, 2022, past archives are also available in our website. IEIC publishes four Japanese journals and seven English journals with impact factors. IESS, which is one of the four technical societies of IEIC, publishes IEIC transactions on information and systems. This transaction, transaction is open to everyone for submission regardless of membership. Uh, but the archive of all previous issues on our website, including the first issue, is available only to members. In addition, the papers published after 2008 are available for everyone as open access papers on JSTAGE. Uh, in addition to regular issues, the transactions have various special issues. So please take the opportunity to submit your paper. IEICE will begin a trial of multilingual translation of IEICE transactions on online with 16 languages in April 2024. The trial will cover the bibliographic information, abstracts, and the full text of the four IEIC transactions and LX. For previous papers published before March 2024, 
only bibliographic information and abstracts will be translated. Every year in March, ISS and the other IEIC societies jointly uh, hold uh, the IEIC General Conference. In addition, every summer, ISS co-hosts the Forum on Information Technology, so-called FIT, with the Human Communication Group of IEIC and the Information Processing Society of Japan. These events are aimed at providing opportunities for new knowledge discovery and human networking, especially for students and young researchers who will lead this field uh, in the future. The Global Net Workshop and a number of English language sessions are planned for the IEIC General Conference in Hiroshima in March 2024. We are looking forward to seeing you there. Lastly, for those who are not a member of IEIC yet, you can receive information about English webinars and other useful information via our email newsletters. Uh, to do so, uh, please, you, you can register as an associate member. So please join IEIC now. That's all from me. Thank you very much for, again, for attending the, this webinar.